Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here. Thank you for those of you who've been following my YouTube channel and my Source Filmmaker Tips of the Day videos. Uh, recently, I posted a couple of test videos where I was experimenting with motion capture, and I've been inundated with requests for a tutorial on how to do it. So uh, I have decided to put one together. This is the first in a series of videos that will describe the process that I went through and show you all the steps that you will need to take in order to do full body motion capture with your own uh, hardware and software at home. Uh, we are going to be going through this step by step, and so we're going to start with the motion capture recording software, which in my case is called IPISoft, I-P-I-S-O-F-T. You can find it at, at IPISoft.com, I-P-I-S-O-F-T.com. There are two pieces to it. There's IPISoft Recorder and IPISoft Motion Capture Studio. Uh, the Motion Capture Studio is the software that will cost you money, and it can cost as much as $1,000 depending on what features you want. Uh, it can support up to two connects, four PlayStation Eyes, I believe, and uh, six web cameras and a certain number of the Asus motion capture solution called the Xtion or Xtion. Never known how it's pronounced, but uh, there are multiple alternatives for configuration of hardware with the motion capture solution. Uh, I used two connects, the Xbox 360 connects. They have the motor. The Windows connects do not. That's the only real difference as far as I know. It does support both the Windows and the Xbox 360 connects. Uh, the recorder software is free, but you need the motion capture software to process the video that you record with the recorder software. And the reason for that is so that you can use the recorder software on a mobile solution like a laptop or something like that. Uh, the, uh, in order to do the recording with two connects, you will need enough bandwidth on your computer to be able to handle two high-speed USB devices. And what that boils down to is you need two USB 2.0 hubs that don't have a whole lot of uh, bandwidth already taken up. Uh, you're going to want to test it very carefully and make sure that you can get both cameras, both connects working with, uh, with whatever computer you're going to be doing the recording on. So once you've downloaded and installed IPISoft Recorder and plugged in your connects and made sure that the recorder recognizes them, uh, then we need to go through the calibration phase and the configuration of your cameras. And I'm going to show you that right now. Once you've started the IPISoft motion capture software, you'll see that there's a couple of cameras that you've configured. And if you have them configured properly, you'll be able to select the ones you want. Then you go in and you will need to adjust the properties of each individual camera to make sure that it is collecting the view information that you need to. There's two ways to set up cameras in the IPI recorder. One is with a 60 to 90 degree set of, set of a angle of separation where they're both facing in the same general direction but crossing their fields of view. And the other one is 180 degrees opposed from one another, which is the option I chose. Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm adjusting the tilt using the, uh, the motor controls. Uh, and as you can see, as I do that, it's causing the field of view to change. The blue band on the bottom is the floor. Uh, the orange in the background is the background. And the yellow dots are bits of uh, information where the Connect was unable to determine depth information. But as long as it's mostly not yellow, as long as there's not a whole lot of yellow, you're probably OK. And at least I was OK with my setup. Um, so once you've determined that you have the right angle for both of them and that they're both positioned appropriately and that you're seeing the same uh, uh, information, or the correct information, uh, you'll want to go in and hit the Evaluate button. And what the Evaluate button does is it will take a, a few seconds of video and then it will try and figure out where's the background in this so it can remove it from future things. After you've done the evaluation, then you're going to need to record your calibration video. Uh, to record your calibration video, you just hit record, and then it'll count down from five. And once it gets to one, though, you wait a couple of seconds. You wait at least two to three seconds, so it's nothing but background in the cameras. Then you step into the field of view. And as you can see, what I've got here is a large cardboard panel. It should be a rectangular object. And the specific dimensions are given on, given on the IPISoft wiki. But it should be about a meter square, uh, a little higher than it is wide. and uh, you know, just a good sized thing about that size. That was a, a, a picture packing uh, box, I believe. And you're going to stand between the two cameras and wave it back and forth a little bit. And I don't mean flap it around. I mean, you got to just change the angle so you're presenting a slightly different angle over the course of about five to 10 seconds to each camera. Then you're going to go back and you're going to fire up Motion Capture Studio, which I've just done. And uh, you're going to then. Uh, 
from Motion Capture Studio, you'll click File and you'll select New Project. You'll cl you'll click the video that you just recorded in the recorder. You're going to select Calibration Project. Choose the orientation of your cameras, and then there will be a few seconds of this kind of thing going on. Uh, and then there will be a short video, or, or excuse me, it will start playing the video. Uh, if you look carefully in the background of mine, you can see my cat is in the back there. He spent the entire day sleeping. He didn't seem to bother anything much, though. So the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, you'll fast forward using, you'll scrub basically, there's a little uh, hook at the, or a little button at the bottom you can use to scrub back and forth. And you're going to want to find the beginning and the end of where you began flapping that thing around. Now again, you're not really flapping it, you're waving it, you're, you're, you're changing the orientation. You can see I'm moving it back and forth. And what I'm doing is I'm going to switch from each camera and I'm just going to make sure that in both cameras I'm getting good depth information and I'm not getting a lot of yellow or any yellow at all optimally on the panel and that the depth information is changing. And you can see that the depth data is changing based on the colors on the calibration panel. So that looks pretty good. So then you're going to want to set the endpoint by either clicking I or dragging that timeline from the left in. And then once you get to the end of it, you're going to want to set the out point by either click hitting the O key or dragging from the left in. And what we've done now is we've created the region of interest. The region of interest is one where we can um, determine that this is the, in the information that we want Motion Capture Studio to look at. It's the, in it's the area we're interested in. Once you've done that, you're going to want to go to the Calibrate tab and click Calibrate based on 3D Plane. And then you're going to have to wait a minute. And it will do this. And as it goes through each panel, you'll see little dots appear on it. And what it's doing is it's calculating the information to determine the relative orientation of the cameras. And it will use that in the future when we do action sequences. Now. It is critical once you have done this calibration pass and save, we're going to save an XML file in a moment, but once you have done this calibration, do not, under any circumstances, move the cameras unless you want to recalibrate, in which case that's fine. You can recalibrate anytime you like. It doesn't actually take that long, but don't move the cameras, not even a smidge, uh, because it will mess up your cameras and your motion capture. Uh, if you do. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let this fast forward a little bit and then we will uh, we will pick back up after we finish doing the calibration. Okay, the calibration is completed and uh, it'll keep on showing you the spinny thing for a moment. But then what you can do is if you go to the view menu, you can say turn on information from both sensors if you're using two connects. Uh, and then you can use the right mouse button to drag the field of view around at the currently selected point in the timeline. And as you can see, it's done a pretty good job of reconstructing uh, the information uh, that it got from the depth field. And I even turn on the video thing there so you can kind of see it shows the, the flat image in the background of me and then uh, the three-dimensional representation that it was able to derive from both of them. You're going to want to pan around a little bit and make sure that your calibration did work correctly uh, and that you've got good depth information from all of them. And it looks like I do. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the Scene tab and say Save Scene. I'm going to give it a name. In my case, I said 180 Opposed, 180 Opposed. Name it whatever you want. But this is your scene configuration file and determines what your, um, uh, uh, it's your calibration for your future uh, action sequences that you record using this particular setup. So that's it for this particular tutorial on how to calibrate and how to uh, set up your, your cameras. Next, we're going to record some sequences and bring them into Motion Capture Studio. So we'll see you at the next tutorial. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'm Jimmer Linz, and uh, I appreciate you watching.